Some of the rivers I've studied closely are those on the western Great Plains, which covers more than a third of Colorado. Rivers like the Arikari, which make up part of the Republican River Basin and also drain part of Nebraska and Kansas. Many rivers on the Great Plains are dry when you cross them, and so most people probably think that fish don't live there especially people like me who grew up fishing in places like Minnesota where water is everywhere. This is an arid landscape and the water in these streams has always ebbed and flowed during times of drought and flood. And yet the fish and other aquatic life that we find here are specifically suited to this environment and have evolved ways to thrive through periods of drying and wetting. For millennia, the springs and groundwater associated with the vast underground Ogallala Aquifer have allowed these fish to weather these severe droughts. In fact, our research has shown that fish can persist through long, hot summer droughts in scattered refuge pools that are fed by the groundwater from this Ogallala Aquifer. And so this work that we did helped open our eyes about how tough these fish really are and how they can persist in a harsh and variable landscape like this one. And yet, what has been developing over the last 50 years or so is really the biggest challenge that these fish are going to face. Over the past five decades, pumping from the groundwater wells that supply the large center pivots has nourished an agricultural boom in this region for crops like corn, alfalfa, and sugar beets. It's allowed farmers in the Arikari Basin to produce consistent yields of crops that were never possible before the groundwater wells that supply these irrigation systems. But in the five decades or so since the wells have been put in, the pumping of groundwater has decreased the water table throughout the region and is depleting the aquifer faster than it could be recharged by rains and snow. And so for the brassy minnow and all the other aquatic life that rely on rivers like the Arikari, the springs and the groundwater that have always been their life support system are drying up and the rivers are shrinking year by year. In fact, we estimated that if pumping continues the same as it has been in the past, that most of the Arikari River would dry up within 35 years. From about 70 miles long, which it was originally, to only about a half a mile long. When we talked to the farmers themselves, I realized how aware they are of the impact of pumping on the water table because this water table is also the lifeblood of much of the farming in this region. And most of them are taking every measure to ensure the conservative use of water. And so, for years I've been bringing my students here to talk to the farmers see the technology that they're using to conserve water. And my students become enlightened not only to the reality of farming and ranching in this landscape, but also how a conservation organization like the Nature Conservancy can play a role in water conservation and river management in landscapes like this. They've been working to do things like acquire lands along the river, to buy out some of the wells that are most critical to supplying the river and retire those wells. And also to work with these local groups such as the Three Rivers Alliance to use technology to try to conserve more water. And so it's in stories like these that my students and I find how complex these problems really are and how sophisticated the solutions are going to need to be. We know that reconciling river conservation with the need to feed a growing human population that has surpassed now 7 billion is a delicate and difficult task. And so I feel privileged to try to educate this new generation of creative and dedicated scientists and conservation professionals who I hope will rise to this challenge 
and help us have a future that includes both Great Plains rivers and the native fishes that inhabit them.